Convective storms are back once again in the Great Plains, and today is the 25th anniversary of the October 4th, 1998 tornado outbreak in Oklahoma. 26 tornadoes with this outbreak. One of those was the famous Watonga F2 tornado. Tim Marshall was on that. Also an F3 near Prague after dark and a nearly mile wide F2 further east. Biggest Oklahoma outbreak in history during the fall months. For today though, a big transition into fall. We've got polar air flowing southeast through the northern plains and through the Rockies as well. Driving this cold front from just east of Minneapolis-St. Paul through Kansas City and down towards Midland. The dry line pretty far west out there around Roswell, Carlsbad, down to Chihuahua. This is all tropical air flowing north, low-level jet just ahead of this frontal system. And out to the east, we've got recycled polar air, so rather mild conditions and slightly lower dew points. Well, unfortunately, the AWIP server that I use is down for maintenance for a couple of hours. We're going to use Pivotal Weather. This is another great source of weather charts. We're up at 300 millibars. This is up at about 30,000 feet near jet stream level and showing the Pacific very active. We do have that flow broken up into a series of high amplitude ridges and troughs. There they are, the jet stream coming into British Columbia, exiting Labrador. And the pattern does seem progressive. We got these troughs and ridges moving right along. There's a big ridge right there, but trough moving in from the North Pacific. This is associated with a atmospheric river that will be flowing into British Columbia this weekend and then working down the Pacific coast as we go into early next week. And there's the IVT chart, thanks to UCSD, showing our first atmospheric river moving up towards Anchorage, Valdez, and Yakutat. This is looking at the forecast from the GFS for tonight into tomorrow. And then we look at this thing coming up for this weekend. That makes a beeline eastward across the North Pacific and smashes right into British Columbia as we get into Saturday night and Sunday. Lots of moisture flowing in around Seattle, Portland, and we get to the end of the sequence, and here's atmospheric river number three, moving a little bit more towards Oregon, Washington, but a little bit too early to tell. Well, amazingly, we're still dealing with Tropical Storm Philippe. This is the 12th day of advisories. It's up to 40 knots right now. Now, interestingly, they've brought the forecast track west into Maine and Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. That's very similar to what we saw with Hurricane Lee not too long ago. However, it is going to remain a tropical storm, no longer going for the hurricane intensification that they were calling for back on Monday. And that will move inland as a tropical depression all the way up into Quebec. And we're not looking for any other problems in the tropical Atlantic. Returning to our weather map, we do have this large ridge extending from the Pacific into Idaho and the Central Rockies and Central Plains. This is all part of that polar air mass that I talked about with a Pacific origin. And then just up to the north, we've got this other air mass of Canadian origin. If you look at the dew points, you can see a very slight difference. Instead of 40s and 50s dew points, we've got 30s starting to show up. Very strong northwesterly flow. And this is of northwest Canadian origin. We take a look up there. We do catch that North Pacific system there off of British Columbia, south of Alaska and up north in Alaska itself. It is getting cold. We're starting to see teens and single digits. The Brooks range there five degrees and on the north slope still looking at 20s with a little bit of downslope flow off the Brooks range. But there's a 1032 millibar high right there over Northway, Tok and Dawson. Not much going on elsewhere in northern Canada. In fact, it looks a little bit mild. Temperatures creep in towards the freezing mark. And then down there in Hudson Bay, pretty stormy. This is a well-developed 91 millibar low, and it's bringing up quite a fetch of warm air. Even with all this cold weather up north, we've got 70 degrees right there on the shores of Hudson Bay. 
Well, the big story today is this enhanced risk across northwest Texas and southwestern Oklahoma. This covers Childress, Lubbock, Wichita Falls, Lawton, and Ardmore. We are getting that flood of watch boxes from SPC, but they are severe weather watches. And very sparse severe weather reports from Amarillo down to Childress and Plainview. That's going to be hell. About half dollar size and a little bit of wind as well. So yes, to a certain extent, we can see that cold front. It's going to be right in that area there. Also, the storms are kicking out outflow boundaries. So looks like there is some dry air being entrained into some of these storms, probably from the mid or upper levels. A couple strong cells south of Childress. Another one. That's going to be just, I guess, uh, east of Plainview. Let's take a look at the radar. Oh, in fact, yeah, look at that right there. That's outflow as well, leading right up to that cell near Durant. And the radar is showing numerous cells breaking out, so not much capping. But you can see that linear appearance to them, indicating upper-level shear. We are talking 0 through 6-kilometer bulk shears, and we can see a little bit of a difference in the air mass between this side of the outflow boundary and the other side. A little bit more clear. So very likely a lot of the juicier tropical air is sitting right down in this area here. So what do we see here as far as severe weather indicators? One thing you can do is look at how well the highest reflectivities are centered in the storm. For example, in this one, the highest reflectivities are pretty much right in the center of the core. So that would indicate kind of a non-severe structure. It's very much the same with all of these. And going right down the line. Now this one looks a little bit different. The reflectivities are shifted a little bit towards the right side of the storm. And by right, we mean that the cell is moving that way and that's going to be on the right flank. So this could be an area right here where there might be an interesting updraft base, maybe something photogenic to take a look at. Anyway, there's the outflow boundary that separates the unturned tropical air flowing north. That's the moisture coming up. And let's see, there's the outflow boundary. Kind of lose it as we get further away from the radar. But I'm going to say that's kind of right in that area there. However, when you animate this, you can see that we've got these outflow boundaries gusting away from the storms. And when they get too far separated from the outflow boundaries, they tend to get undercut by their own outflow. And that's not conducive to severe weather. They can still put down downburst winds and hail as well, but tornadoes are rather unlikely. There's some outflow right there, some more gusting to the south, so it's just kind of a big party of outflow boundaries all over the place. And generally, when we have this, along with the increase in heating, we start getting organization of these cells into a linear complex, and that means a mesoscale convective system. The high-resolution rapid refresh is useful for anticipating that organization, and we do see that looks very close to what we have on the radar right now. And if we go forward over the next few hours, we do see a convective complex coming together near Wichita Falls, Gainesville, Sherman, and around dark that moves down towards the Interstate 20 corridor towards Greenville, Dallas, and Abilene. And that will continue overnight as an MCS into East Texas, northeastern Louisiana as well, and maybe as far east as Waco and Austin. Now we can see in that very last frame, this is going to be 9Z, about 4 in the morning, we see bulges on this MCS and some indication of mesolows. That's indicated by that black line right there. So this will be kind of a dynamically active MCS. That means we probably will have severe thunderstorm warnings going through much of the night. So let's take a look at the forecast using the NAM going into the overnight hours. As we mentioned, an MCS will be moving through Texas, Pacific air filtering into the central U.S., and we can see thermal troughing right there as some of the Canadian air gets involved as well. So much of this is Pacific air, and this is our Canadian air, and they're going to eventually kind of blend together. So for tomorrow, we get that warm-up. There's the afternoon map, but it will be cold in the northern plains. We're looking for highs in the 50s and 60s up there. 
Meanwhile, out west warming up, getting that thermal ridging up to 78 degrees at Portland, 88 at Medford, and 91 at Sacramento. Then we go into Thursday night and Friday. Front continues moving east. That's going to be our midday map, and it looks like the front is approaching New York. Kind of out in this area right there, and filtering right down there into the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, it is going to be a cold one for the northern plains. You can see the low thicknesses, 534 over Iowa. That's associated with that cold air coming down in the low and mid-levels. Highs will be around 47 at Bismarck, 57 at Des Moines, and 51 at Minneapolis, 59 at Denver. Out west, thermal ridging up into the 80s and 90s in Oregon. And down in the southwestern U.S., looking for 100s once again with 102 at Phoenix and 102 at Palm Springs. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks to our supporters, people like Patrice Brown, Harvey Chevalu, Brian Lejic, Terry Taylor, Adrian Vasquez, and Robert Vermillion. All of you, thank you very much for helping us support the program. All right, then, we'll see everybody back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening. Take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.